Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church, also Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M. Jamez. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we love you, we cherish you. We thank you, Father, for all that you do for our lives. We thank you, Lord, that we are of your kingdom, and not of the Babylon system that is on this earth. We thank you, Father God, we renounce all evils and we we do what is good and as kingdom citizens of heaven we thank you and praise you for all things i pray for the peace the past is on us standing to come over the people of god and realize that they are fully protected by the holy angels and by god himself and also others Brothers and sisters, we are in it together for the glory of God. We thank you and praise you. Amen. Okay, today's sermon is Come Out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon. What's Babylon? Babylon is the whole earth. It's not just a nation. It's the whole earth. It's a system that's on this earth. The Spirit of God prophesied it through me and told me the truth on what Babylon is. And time Babylon is everywhere on the earth. It's many waters, it says. Many, uh, uh, um, it's talking about the earth. It's not talking about just one area. It might be certain areas that are bad, better than others. But it's all the Babylon system because it's, it's what the devil wants. It's not what God wants. The, all you nations, could America, especially America, China and Europe, are the worst of, of all the earth. Because you do not do what God wants. You do what you want to do. And then you have this, this, this fake humility within you. And it's not right. The best of you are, are, are the, in the middle of Africa. You know. And the poorest of the nations, because you are devoted to the ways of the Lord. Amen. So let us begin this sermon. Come out of Babylon. Come out of the system of the earth. God says in its word that we're in the world, but not of the world. So we need to stop being of the of the system of this world, the Babylon system. We need to be citizens of heaven and not citizens of spiritual Babylon of this earth. It doesn't matter where you live, you're still under that system of Babylon. It could be America, it could be Europe, it could be in South Africa, it's all the same system. It's a system that's evil and not good. Don't fool yourself, it is not good. Because if it was going by the scriptures, it, all the nations would be doing differently, including America, especially America and Europe. And, and I warn you, Mexico, you, you stop doing this. You stop being wrong. You stop allowing these officials to reign over you. There's so much that could be done differently in that land. But you have chosen to, to do nothing. When you, all your people can rise up peacefully and kick out those bad leaders in Mexico and, and have, a, have a, 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 a republic, um, monarchy, con constitution. Why a monarchy in there? Because there's people that are from the lineage way a long time ago that are good in heart. And they need to be put in. But they need to understand if they go astray from the ways of the Lord, they will too be in, in the judgment call of the Lord as well, as well as the people. So let us start this sermon. Come out of Babylon. Let's go to the revelation of Jesus Christ, uh, Yeshua. Chapter 18, verse 
4B and 5. 4B and 5 are 18 of Revelation. And it says, May the people come out of her, so that you will not share in her, her sins, so that you will not be affected by her plagues. For her sins are stinky, mass piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Amen. Woe unto the Babylon system on all the earth. For God has seen the crimes that you commit against your own peoples. Woe unto all the nations of the world, for the day of the Lord is here. Let's go to Isaiah, yes, chapter 14, verse 9 through 17. 9 through 17, of 14 of Isaiah. Just head over there now. And the word of God says, Shalom below stirs up to meet you when you come. It awakens for you as a ghost of the dead. Who, will, uh, who were leaders on the earth? It makes all the kings of other nations arise from their thrones. They all greet you with these words. Now you are weak as we are, and you have become like us. Your pride has been brought down to hell. With the music of your lyres and under the magistrate of the maggots, over your blankets are worms. How did you come to fall from the heavens? Morning, uh, evening star, Son of the dawn, how did you come to cut to the ground, conquering over nations? Woe unto you politicians, woe unto the Pope, for this is who this is, the system that you are. How did you come to be cut down to the ground to conquer nations? You thought to yourself, I will uh, scale the heavens. And I will raise my throne above God's stars. And I will sit on the, the mount of the assemblies far away from the north. And I will raise past the top of the clouds. And I will make myself like, like the Most High. Woe to you, popes, for you have done this. This is talking about nations. It's not talking about a nation. There was only one nation when he rebuked Satan out of the Garden of Eden. And Eden was that nation and had a big garden. There's two words, not one word that has two, but there were different words. Eden is a different identity than the garden. Gar gar the garden was called a garden, but Eden is the nation, first nation that God created for mankind, for Adam and Eve. So it's talking about nations here. So it's talking about a different time. Everybody interprets it as it's talking about the fallen one that people call Lucifer, that's called Satan. But it's not. It's talking about the Babylon system of today on the earth. It's talking about the wickedness of men and women. How when they were growing up, they were doing the right thing, and then suddenly they, they, there was wickedness found in them, and they, they fell, fell to the, got cut to the ground, and became politicians, and they, they cut, they conquered nations and hurt people. It's talking about the popes, all of them. All the popes are clearly the Antichrist. The last one is the Antichrist. All the all the uh, politicians are, except for few of them, very few rarely defined too, are all false.
prophets, or false messengers of the devil. That included on that is the corporate news media, Hollywood, anybody that sets themselves to, to pull you away from your beloved God Almighty can be considered that, those things. So come out of Babylon, church. Come out of Babylon, synagogues. Come out of Babylon, holy temples. For the Lord is warning you now. The system of Babylon is going to go. For the holy angels of God that are the end time angels are here to rebuke the system and to see it burn and go away. And when it does, the system of the Lord will come. His system will come, and when he comes, all the wicked will be round up, forcefully taken away. The only people that will be allowed on the earth at that, that time will be the holy ones that are going by the ways of the Lord and the righteous and the elect. Let's go on for their testimony of these things. Revelation of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, chapter 14, verse 6 through 8. And it says, hold on. Those that are bothered by these things should know that they are not truly saved because they're bothered by it because they know it in their hearts it's true. And all you have to do is give your life to the living God. And stop being um, focused on your color, your skin, or focus on this or that of flesh, but be focused on getting yourself right with the King of Glory. Now let's read this together. It says, "Next, I saw another angel flying in the middle of heaven, with the everlasting good news." To proclaim to the those living on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people, in a loud voice he said, Reverend God, give him glory, for the hour has come when he will pass judgment. Worship the one who made the heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of the water. Are you listening? Another angel, a second one, falling, saying, She has fallen, she has fallen, Babylon the great. She, ma she made all the nations drink wine of God's, of God's fairy caused by her whoring. Woe to the church, woe to the synagogue, woe to the holy temple, Steph that stay in the system of Babylon, for you have been warned this day. Blessed are those that listen. Blessed are those that go and attain by the scriptures and merit great goodness of God for thereof, and, and fellowship very mightily every day with their creator that is their Papa and Savior, Lord. Amen. Let us go now to Isaiah, Shehu, chapter 1. Verse 15 through 17. And the scripture saith, And when you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. No matter how much you pray, I won't listen. Because your hands are covered with blood. Are you listening? Wash yourself clean. Get your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Reveal, reveal the oppress. Defend the orphans. Plead for the widow. Are you hearing what the Spirit of God is saying here? 
We need to do what is good and, and clean to what is good. And be holy as your Lord, your God is holy. Stop doing evil. Stop doing evil and start doing good. That's how easy it is. But the devil has, has buffled many men and women. And, they, and, and the devils of hell feed off evil. They feed off fear. They feed off strife. So stop doing these things. Stop doing evil and do what is good. Many men and women don't want to do good anymore because they have been lied to, saying it's okay to be evil. It is not. Evil, all evil wickedness does is bring death and destruction. And therefore blood is on their hands. God says, do what is good. Stop doing evil and do good. Stop it right now. Cut it off and start doing good. Start getting right with your creator God because he loves you enough to bring his servants like myself. These things and these messengers. Now let us go back to Revelation of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, chapter 14. Verse 9 through 12. Okay, hold on. Let us go there. All right, and it says, another angel, a third one, follow me, said to, in a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast or the image, you know what the, the you know what the image is? It's those, it's, it's that, the, the image that they're trying to put across our nations. It's, it's that satanic statue. That's the image with the two children and, and, the, and that, very horrible looking thing that is the image that the bible warns about the beast is the politicians bloodthirsty to harm their own people and to harm the the righteous and to harm other nations but the image is that thing if i was you are any of your officials from any of these states and, and you got petitions to put that up? If you put that up, God will turn his back away from that city. And, and you will be in very much in trouble at that point. You will wish you listened to God's servant this day. Let's continue with God's word. And if anyone worships the beast or the image and receives the mark, mark is a, a mark of loyalty. That means you put your loyalties in that thing instead of God. On your, on your forehead or your hand, he will indeed drink the wine of God's poor very wrath utterly into the cup of rage and he will be tormented by fire and sulfur before the holy angels because before the lamb and smoke from their tortures goes up forever and ever and they have no rest day or night those who worship the beast and the image and those who receive the mark of his name this is this is when the perseverance is needed and the part of God's people. Do you think you're gone when God says you're here? Huh? Do you really think, ministers, that the people of God are gone when he says we're here clearly in Scripture? We are here for the whole thing. But 
if you let fear wrap you, then you're in the wrong. You you are preaching this and making them fearful instead of faithful. The warning is here that we must not be part of the Babylon system no more. Those of you churches that refuse to listen to this message, those of you synagogues and holy temples refuse to listen to this message, woe unto you, for it has been given. The warning has been given. This is when the per perseverance is needed and part of God's people. Those who observe his commandments, what are his commandments from Genesis to Revelation? Is his commandments and as a, and execute Yeshua's faithfulness. We got to look at God's commandments, and then we got to look at what Yeshua's words were directly. But it's not enough to look at just Yeshua's words. We got to look at to what Yeshua also said throughout the whole Word of God, and and what he's pointing to more than anything when he says commandments is the commandments that are holy. In the Torah and the prophets, because it was the Lord Himself that spoke and says, "If you want to be greater in the the greatest in the kingdom of God, you're going to read the Torah and the prophets. You want to be least in the kingdom of God, you're going to then keep voiding those things. You're going to be least in the kingdom of God because those that are greatest in the kingdom of God read those things because those things are powerful and and they will change your life." And the foundation thereof afterwards of, of the Torah and the prophets, of course, are the words directly from Yeshua. Amen. But all these words are from Yeshua. Okay. And this is what you avoid. And because you avoid them, you are avoiding the deep things that God is trying to plant in you. And therefore, you at least in the kingdom of God, because you're not reading of the Torah and the prophets. It's right in, in Matthew where it says that, but everybody avoids that part. Or they change the wording a little bit in their minds thinking that's not what it says, but it's very clearly says that. And this, this is when perseverance is needed on part of God's people. Those who observe his commands and, and, and Exercise Yeshua's faithfulness. Next, I, amen. Did, did you listen to that? So we need to, to be in God's word. We need to be in God's commandments, the Torah and the prophets. And we need to look at the, the direct words of what the Gospels and Acts where you sh and Revelation where Yeshua is directly speaking. To his disciples and through to us. Amen. And we need to look at these things very clearly. And if you look in a carnal nature in the word, it's not going to get you anywhere. you got to pray and ask the Lord that you see it through the spirit and learn it through to your spirit. And then your carnal nature won't take in. And it's more this the, the, the understanding and the knowledge of your mind that is more pure will take over with your spirit on what you're reading instead of this having the carnal nature surmise what it's saying through the spirit of god and through yielding to our spirit to, through the word and then the the normal understanding of our mind will take over instead of the carnal nature which is surmising because that is what you do not want to have is this surmising of the carnal part of your mind. You want the pure understanding to take over in your mind through the guidance of our spirit, yielding to God's spirit. Amen. And therefore, we're going to get the correctness of God's word. Amen. Because God loves us. God has a plan for us. Let us go now to Psalms to Helam. Chapter 51, verse 1 through 13. Let's go over there, my friends. Those that have a humble heart and listen unto this, this sermon, 
They will be blessed. Those of you that have reviled in your hearts to these things. I pray for you because you are so close to losing everything. Because when the prophet speaks, people need to listen. And it's very important to listen indeed when the word of God is spoken through the prophet of God. It needs to be heard that much greater. God is God in your grace. Have mercy on me and great compassion blot out, out our, our crimes. It's talking about salvation. In, in great compassion, blot out our crimes. How could he do that unless he went to the cross, right? And and the permits of of atonement of our our what we do. Amen. Cleanse me from my sins, for I know my crimes. My skin com, uh, my sin uh, confronts me all the time. Against you, you only have I sinned and, and done evil in your presence so that you are right to accuse us. And justice is past sentence. Truly, true, I was born in guilt, was a sinner from the moment my mother conceived me. Still, you want truth in the inner person so that make me know your wisdom in my innermost heart. Sprinkle me with hits up, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear and sound of joy and gladness, so that my bones you crush can rejoice. Turn, turn away your face from my sins. Blot out my crimes. Create in, in, in me a clean heart, O God. Renew and, and restore my spirit. Don't thrust me away from your presence. Don't take your Rukadash, the Holy Spirit, away from me. Restore my joy and my salvation. Let my willing spirit uphold me. And then I will teach the wicked your ways. And sinners will return to you. Amen. Are you hearing? Are you hearing the heartbeat of God? This is the heartbeat of God crying out to you this day, O Church of Synagogue, Holy Temple, people of the world, all of you. Listen this day. For God wants to clean your heart out. God wants to take that dead in spirit, make a living spirit in you, make you spirit filled, full of holiness, full of God's great faith, not little faith that we kick around, but God's faith, Yeshua's faith. Amen. It's time to get a hold of that. Amen. God's got a plan. Come out of Babel. Come out of Babel. Come out of Babel. Amen. Let's go to Matthew, Menahu, chapter 6, verse 19 through 34. 1934 of 6 of Matthew. Amen. It's a good name. Amen. The word of God speak and it saith, Do not store up for yourself wealth here on earth. This is a big one for your churches, synagogues. Holy temples. This is a real big one for you. Listen. Don't have grudgingness over this. This is God's word. He loves us. That's why he speaks these ways unto us. In his word and through others. That have been uh, cast through the fire. of, and, and they made it through it. And you know. Do not store up for yourself wealth on earth. Where moth and rust destroy it, where burglars break in and steal, instead of store up for yourself wealth and heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and burglars do not break in and steal. 
For where your wealth is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if you have a good eye, that is, if you are generous, your whole body will be full of light. But if you eye is evil, if you are stingy, your whole body will be full of darkness. And if if then the light if then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can be a slave to two masters, for he will either hate the, the first or love the second, scorn the second or be loyal to the first. You can't be a slave to both God and money. Did you hear that? You cannot be a slave to both God and money, or in this case, uh, a, a servanthood to both God and money. Amen. Are you listening? I know it's a hard message, but you gotta listen. If you want the blessing, you gotta listen. And 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 if you and therefore, when you listen, you you agree and understand, even though it's hard. Things that are hard, even diamonds are tested by the fire and chipped away by the artisan. Okay? And you don't get the diamond in the raw the way you get in the stores, okay? And God is trying to make us like those precious jewels that the women and us guys, we men say, wow, that's pretty. You know, we go by and say, yeah, that's good. Yeah, you see that? Yeah, well, we're going to go now. Check our sports out, man. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's pretty. Yeah, that's cool. This, you know. But we, meanwhile, inside of man, are like blown away on the beauty of all these gyms. You know, the stores. We, you know, go, you know, we go in the mall and check it, but we secretly say, yeah, we're we're the man. We're, we, you know, we should be there. But you know, it's all right to look at them. But see, the beauty of all those things were had to be chipped away, test by the fire, and and made sure that it was genuine, you know? And so do our lives the same way a diamond, an emerald, a sapphire, and a ruby is made, amen? Our life is the same way. Just like gold, gold has to be refined. And they either make bricks, coins, and all the other things. But we are refined that way too, amen? So we need to understand these things. Therefore, I tell you, don't see. Yeah, th therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. It's life more than food and drink or, um, in, or, or our body more than clothing. Look at the birds flying about. They neither plant nor harvest, nor do they gather food into the barn. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Who feeds the birds? God wouldn't say he didn't do it if he did. He does. He says he feeds the birds. Who does it? God. So people better watch what they do with birds. Because God likes them. Or he wouldn't say it. He wouldn't use that example. He would use uh, like about the hog or something or about, about the lizard or something. You know what I'm saying? Even God God presents what he likes, okay? So we got to watch what we say or do about for the birds, okay? And be nice to all God's creation. Don't worship it, but respect it and be nice to it and direct it where it needs to go, okay? Needs to go in the trees, we'll put it, help it go in the trees. Be nice to it. How would you like it if it was reversed and the birds treated us that way and, and directed us to, you know, certain areas don't need to go? You know, that that's not nice. Look at look at the, the birds flying away about. They neither plant nor harvest, nor do they gather food in the barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they are? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? 
He's asking a question and it should be no, because no, he can't. Only the Lord can do that for us. And why do be anxiety about the clothing, thinking about the field of the wild irises and how they grow? Neither work nor spin or uh, thread. Yet I tell you, not even Shalomo, Solomon, in all its glory was clay, clothed in beauty as one of these irises. If this is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, uh, thrown into the fire, won't he much more clothe you? What little trust do you have? Are you listening? So don't be excited asking what will we eat, what will we drink, or how will we clothe? For the pagans who set their hearts all do these things. Your heavenly Father knows you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God. It doesn't say seek first your government officials. It doesn't say seek first what the corporate news media is doing. It doesn't say seek first Hallwin. No, it doesn't say seek first your neighbor. It says seek ye first the kingdom and all its righteousness and all the right relationship you need to have with God. And all the right standing you need to have to, with God. And the ancient word of righteousness. The, the, the wisdom and uh, the right wisdom of the spirit upon you. And all these things will be given and ministered. Both given and ministered to you as well. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow worries about itself. Today is enough already to upon you amen so are you hearing the father's heart are you hearing what he's saying he wants us to get out of come out of babylon come out of babylon come out of babylon come out of the system of this earth you got to salvation of the lord is if you're really saved you're going to come out of Babylon. If you are a lukewarmer, you're not going to do it. And boy, you're going to be sad because the day's coming. But the Lord's going to correct all these things on this system on this earth. And a lot of people are going to be judged. Are you going to be part of that judgment? Are you going to be in Geshem? Spiritual Geshem. God's God. It doesn't matter where you are. God's God, God might have you move somewhere else to protect you. In that case, if, if it's something that's going to hit there, but he he's going to if you live for him, he'll show you what you need to do. OK, if you need to move or you need to stay, God is the one that's going to show you that, you know. But anyways, you're going to be under his umbrella of his love. OK, well, the rest won't. The rest will be full wrath of God upon him. God, yes, God uses the elements of nature for judgment. He even has angels over these things that that makes uh, things bless an uh, uh, area or things get uh, the opposite, a judgment from those things. He has full control of everything. He really does. And he has angels that he trusts over all these things. You know, and you, you you have a drought, and necessary your town is trying to live for God. You need to be praying, and ask that God release that angel that's in charge over those elements of rain, and dew, and whatever you need of, and, and allow him to rain upon that that town. If your if your town is living and trying to walk for the Lord. There's no reason why you should not be praying that way. You should be. But if your town is has iniquity in it, don't you pray to God and ask for rain when you have a drought because you're having that drought because you're not right with God. You need to get right with God first. That city needs to get right with God. And then they ask for the rain or they ask for the, the, the snow or they ask for the sunshine or whatever it is. Okay. 
and then the Lord will heal you. He'll heal your city if you allow him to. But a lot of you choose to want your city to be in wickedness. And therefore, you, you get the judgment out of it. Let's go to Revelation of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, chapter 19, verse 1 through 8. All right. And after these things, I heard what was sounded like a roar of a huge crowd in heaven shouting, Hallelujah, the victory, glory, power of our God. For he has judgment are true and just. He will judge the great whore, which is symbolically of the Babylon system all over the earth which represents Satan. He's going to finally judge that foul serpentine. He will judge the great whore who corrupted the earth with her whoring. He will take vengeance on her who has the blood of her the servants on her hand. And the second time they said, Hallelujah, her smoke goes up forever and more. Symbolic meaning final judgment has come. The 24 elders and the four living beings. It's not beasts, it's a being. There are four living beings. Fell down. Worship God sitting on the throne and says, Amen and Hallelujah. That means they are agreeing a second time in one accord. Amen. Because Amen means, so be it. Hallelujah is praise Yahweh. Praise the power of God. Amen. As well, it means. And the voice went out from the throne saying, Praise our God, all your servants. You, you who reverent him, remember, we got to fill in the blank when it says him. It's really saying more than this him. And it should be capitalized H, too, if they're going to do that. It's lowercase h. That's a no-no. But, but it should say capital H. And it should say parentheses, you know, the Messiah and the Word of God. Amen. Because that's what it's really, because it just says, praise our God, all his servants. That's correct, little h. This is talking about all of us. You who fear him, which is reverency, holy fear, uh, him, which is the Messiah, the Word of God, who fear, which reverency, the Messiah, and the Word of God, small and great. And then I heard a sound like a roar of a huge crowd, like a sound of rushing waters, like the loud pure of thunder saying, Hallelujah, praise the power of God, or praise Yahweh. Yahweh, God of the heavenly armies, have begun its reign. Let us re rejoice and be glad. Let us give him glory. For the time has come for the wedding of the Lamb. And people need to stir up some excitement like they do in football and baseball and basketball. Come on now. And NASCAR going on. And, and, and this bride has prepared herself. Fine linen, bright and clean, has been given her to wear. We, this has been given to us, but we, don't, we had to work for it. What do you mean by working for some? We have to work our faith, just like you work out in a gym or working on the Wii U, which more of us should do more often than not. But but uh, we work our faith. You got to work that faith. Work it, work it, work it. You know what I'm saying? Because God's got that precious garment symbolically for us to wear. Amen. God bless. So the the end of the results is good, okay? And rather you're going to get the good or the bad, it counts on, are you going to yield to God? Are you are you going to come out of Babylon system of this earth? Come out of Babylon. This is a warning. This is a warning. And, the, and, and you know what? 
you know, also it's a warning for those that would that would uh, try to make this so people can't see it or hear it. There's a warning there for you. Do you not know that, that God of creation is watching everything you CEOs are doing that are bad and good? So it's best for you to do good. Yet everybody has a right to a freedom of expression and speech it's when you say you're gonna kill someone or when it's when you say you're gonna are you gonna take your the freedom of reaction and you're going to actually do it that's when it becomes bad or when a CEO decides well I'm gonna I'm gonna favor these and I'm gonna dis I'm gonna hurt these other ones and not let their videos go out that is a violation of the First Amendment when you do that. Do you know that? And and someone could take you to court and they would win. Or not and if you go to court, you're not going to sue like the world does. You're going to sue to not for the money, but for them to come around to understand that they were wrong about blocking your freedom of expression and freedom of speech. Everybody's worried about the freedom of speech, yes, but freedom of expression is the one that's really under attack more than anything. And in all the world, and God, God, God gave us those rights of freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of, of learning how to worship God in spirit and truth. Because we're all on different levels. Some of us are brand new. Some of us are veterans. Okay. The veterans need to help the ones that aren't there yet. And sometimes we forget. But we're remembering right now, my fellow veterans. We need to look at the brand new ones. Okay. I say brand new ones. I say a five years and under is pretty new. Sometimes people need a re, uh, a re a hashing of their faith too. Okay. And that's where you get the teachings within your church and synagogue. And you know what? You need to put the you need to break the lock off, so to speak, and have someone always there. What I mean by that, it's a, it's a it's my Michael's idiom, you know, saying we need to have church more often. We need to have synagogue more. We need to have holy temple more. We need to have things going on all the time in the church. Hey, if we have to pay for the building, let's use this use it up. Just use the time well on it, okay? I don't think it's well spent when we when we have to pay for these buildings, the house, the church, and the synagogue, and holy temple, and we just use it for a little bit. Let's use it all the time, man. Let's open it up. Let's get some things going on. Let's have some old-fashioned 24-hour prayer meetings like we used to do. Let's have that that uh, that time uh, on Fridays where we just get together and we just start worshiping the Lord and the Spirit together. And pray for one another. Cover ourselves with oil. Let's love each other. Let's give some hugs out. Let's, let's hug each other. And the word of God. Let's hug the word of God. Let's hug each other. Let's say we're brothers and sisters. We need to start acting like it here. Church, synagogue, synagogue, holy temples. Man, I'm telling you, we need to learn how to be family more. And the church is a synagogue. Stop worrying about the building being painted. You know what? God's don't worry about the color either. Everybody's gonna fight over the color, just paint it white. Well, that's what happens when you fight too much. Minister needs to step in and say, we're going to just paint it white because you guys are just fighting. You want it brown over there. You want it tan over there. Well, we're going to just paint it white. And if it gets dirty, it gets dirty. We'll just, we'll just take the, the power washer on it. You know? And that solves the problem. No fighting in the church. Unless it's, it's a healthy way of doing it. What I mean a healthy way is reasoning out. Well, like one says, saying that way. The other saying it that way. But what, what if both of you are right, but you're just coming across in a different way of filters that we have in our brain? We have 27 different ways we think that God put in this beautiful brain we have. And some people filter different ways when they think about it. And yet there's a whole bunch of people that are right, but they're coming across in a different way of saying it. 
instead of fighting over it, let's just raising it out in a holy way. And we're going to find out, wow, you put all these things together, you're really going to understand what you're what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Instead of fighting and thinking, because everybody filters differently. This is why my fellow ministers, we have to understand that people are going to filter our messages a little bit differently than other people. That's why there's nothing wrong with repeating the situation that you're talking about, maybe again, in a different way. Because the chances are, and a good way of saying that is people are going to understand it much better. You know, these people that filter more in a way of intelligence, and there's people that filter more in our artistic way. And there's going to be people that are going to filter it first through more of a sports way, so to speak, without, you know, and people are going to filter it differently. Okay. And so you got to have variety within the way you talk about things. It sometimes can be kind of hard at times and challenging according to what you're going to preach on or teach on. But you know what? God is with us, ministers. And you know what? And we maybe we need to all get together. All us ministers need to humble ourselves, get together and want to call and just pray and, and meet somewhere, you know? Meet at Denny's, meet at IHOP, meet at somewhere. Actually, I, I, I think we should meet at it before anywhere else. We should meet at a Christian diner. Our Jewish diner before we go to these more secular ones. You know what I'm saying? So if there is a Christian diner or a Jewish diner, I go there and meet there before anywhere else because we need to support our own people. Okay? No offense to IHOP or Danny's. I mean, if that's all you got, that's where you got to go. But we got to first think of our fellow brothers and sisters and their business. You know, we need to support their business so it can grow. God wants us to bless our child, okay? So if there's a new business that's a coffee shop or a diner or, or, or I don't know, it could be just a, a picnic table, you know, thing that someone's doing and bring the food or whatever. You know, we need to support our own people, okay? And their, their new adventures or businesses, amen. And uh, so God bless you. I want to really encourage you, fellow ministers, to open the doors of your churches and synagogues and holy temples up. You need to have an open. Open it up. Open it up. Have someone there. You know what? Maybe someone needs prayer. If you don't have anybody in that church, someone's going by and they're feeling kind of strange. Well, you know what? We could have helped that person. You know, put a sign out there. We're open. Come on in if you need prayer. Or, or, or just need to fellowship, prayer fellowship, you know, and, and get the people in there. Maybe more people get saved if they know the church is open, synagogue, and the, and the, and the, our holy temples are more open, you know. Get get the people in there. Pray for them. Pray for healing. Pray for the salvation. Pray for whatever's going on them, you know. Pray for people. And, and, and have more studies in there. Have more activities. Maybe, you know, the guys go out and see a baseball game and, you know, together. And, or even make a baseball team, you know, that were for fun, you know, not for seriousness, just for fun. The only thing you should really take serious is the Word of God and God. And when the sermons are being led by the Spirit, we've got to take that serious too. And the teachings, of course, that are led by the Spirit of God. But, you know, everything else is just like fun, you know, and you need that fun, but you need the seriousness of the word and the teachings and the preachings and and it's come together, community, yes, together. And, you know, sometimes there's elderly that need help. You know, maybe we need to have a day once a year, not once a year, but once a month these days. There's a lot of elderly that need help. Okay, we need. Maybe we need to find out all the elderly in our city and the churches need to go out and, and ask them, what can we do for you today? We're, we're, our, it's our day to look after what needs most help. Maybe they got something on their top shelf, shelf 
in their house and they can't get to it ever. It could be that simple. Or it could maybe their grass needs to be mowed. Maybe, maybe they got some concrete all messed up because the driver decided to be reckless and break it. And maybe we can all get together and fix that up. Whatever it is, let's do it. Remember when we do it to the least of those, we're doing it for the Lord. Amen. So we got to be out of the Father's business. Amen. I'm trying to raise up joy. I'm trying to raise up the people to realize there's a lot of things we need to be doing different. But one thing we need to do, we need to come out of Babylon. We need to get, we get, we got to figure out what is it that is uh, being a citizen of heaven. Okay, there's a lot of scripture, the understanding of what it is to be a citizen of heaven. To our responsibility, both to God and to our fellow other human beings that we just call brothers and sisters. I, I think a lot of fighting would stop if people would just call everybody brother and sister. I do all the time. I go to Starbucks. I talk, I, I, all those guys and girls that are there, I call them brother or sister. Or if they, even if I know their name, I'll say brother, whatever, whatever their name is, or sister, whatever their name is. But I think if we start doing this, and calling people brother and sister, I think I think things will go for the better. Just the little things make a difference. Remember that. Little packages can be great. This is a big package can be. Amen. Well, I want to pray over those that are lost. Arabs, come on now. Come on, bros. Let's get saved. Come on, Christians and Jews that are get stirred up, get spirit, get the spirit filament on you. Get saved, get holy, get cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And the word of God's testimonies that he says through his word. Come on, indigenous people. Come on, come on, outer space people. You know, people in outer space that do things up there, they need to get saved too. Uh, people, the sea, islands, everywhere. It doesn't matter who you are. Get right with the creator. Loves you. Loves you. Loves you. I love you. That's why I take my time to do these things. Service to the Lord and service to my fellow humanity, human beings. Amen. So over 2,000 years ago that the Lord died on that cross. But before he even did that, he lived a perfect life. Showing what a father and son and daughter relationship with their father is. Or in this case, the Heavenly Father, which was him. But he put, painted a picture of a father and son. Or it could be a father and a daughter for you ladies, okay? It's, but he wanted to show a picture of a family working together, okay? And and all that thing got distorted. But he revealed that family that we need to have with God. Amen. God bless you. So now we're in God's family. And, and a lot of you are going to be Let's pray this prayer. Dear God, Yahweh. Pray that prayer. Dear God, Yahweh. I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very, very much, Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Congratulations. Welcome to family God. I love you, my little brothers and sisters. Now, I really encourage you. Find a good word church, spirit-filled church. A church that believes in holiness, and they and they they try to look and glean from the Torah and the prophets, the the things the Spirit of God's really hitting particular for their churches, as well as you know keeping in the gospel, but looking the gospels in a new light, so to speak, and that the way the Jewishness of what is really being said there, the Jewish idioms that are, are spoken many times. And the, and the Gospels that, that are, are misplaced in a different way. Uh, of looking in a new light. Well, wait a second. Just like in America, we say when it rains hard, it's raining cats and dogs. But it's not really raining cats and dogs. That's a American idiom, idiom of saying it's raining hard. Well, there's a lot of things in the Gospels in the New Testament where there's Jewish idioms that weren't translated right. And so they were translated a little off. Um, 
And so we got to go back in that and in, in there and and look for those things and 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 see what it's really saying. Amen. Because it's really saying something there, especially the parables of of Yeshua and a lot of the things that. Uh, Paul's talking about there's a lot of Jewish idioms that Paul uses too so this is why Peter says that if you're not really mature in the, the Lord you should kind of you know wait until you get a little more mature before you read Paul's writings because they're for a more mature lot plus he comes in prophetic ways and and, and Paul's writings too and and so you got to come across like you're reading like Isaiah and things and you're gonna really hit home a little bit more what he's saying you know because that you know as you know as, as you read something you prepare for what you're reading you know if you're gonna read uh something James saying you're gonna prepare well you're gonna you're gonna be in real truth here extra truth and the sword of the truth type of thing so you're going to prepare for that way it's like an i say you prepare to read a prophet book like you read first sam you're going to prepare to read about the the kings and some of the things that are said uh a correction of when they did wrong or this one did wrong and things like that nature well a lot of people don't prepare to read Paul's writings, right? And so then, therefore, there's this bickering and fighting on both sides that's that's nonsense, you know? So there you go. God bless you, brand new ones. And I, the first book I would go to, honestly, to read is the Gospel of John and Proverbs. Because those things, well, those book, those two books are wonderful for brand new, brand new Christians and Jews and and, and, and uh, holy Arabs that are saved by Jesus amen, to read. Um, and it's real important uh, to read the right things when you're getting started, you know. And so maybe someone that's more seasoned than the Lord that really could uh, hit home on John and Proverbs and maybe mix it up a little bit so it keeps, keeps it interesting too. Because the younger generation likes a real interesting, you know, real quick, interesting, not kind of blah. And to a to a lot of us, it's okay. We can go through a whole book and we're fine with it, or, or you know. But with the younger generation, sometimes you got to mix it up a little bit, keep it a little more adventurous. So we got to remember them uh, that are become new, uh, new new believers as well. That are that the more younger generation. We got to focus on a little bit of uh, mixing up that way but find someone seeing that's uh seasoned in the lord to uh do studies on john and proverbs and you know and maybe hit a come of the some of the uh, more uh victories and and crying outs that david talks about in psalms too would be good as well to throw in there but mix it up good you know, just don't, you know, do John all the way through. Maybe John there, Proverbs there, and, and maybe there's something David said in Psalms. Keep it, and keep it adventurous, and, and um, you know. But we need to have that in the churches and synagogues and the holy temples. Uh, 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 those little studies uh, that new people can go to and, and can learn and grow and, and feel encouraged. Because they need to be encouraged to keep growing in the Lord amen, and not and go back in the things of the world. Amen. Because that often happens to new people. They they have a defeat in their life. And, and if, if we were only there to have these studies, especially for them, set up. And, and maybe even have a little meal afterwards. That's always a nice. Oh, Meg, it's very biblical to have a meal together after a study it really is you just got to keep it separate from the sanctuary you got to keep the sanctuary as a, like a holy place you know and so we got to keep it kind of in a different area the food okay drink can be a different thing i mean if it's water is capped you know uh, the coffee if it's a senior they need a little coffee well they can be in the back drinking you know as long as they're careful but the food thing i got to keep that separate you know it's really 
really not good to bring food in the sanctuary like that. Yeah, that you call a place of a house of worship. But outside of that, outside of those doors, anywhere can, you can put food, you know. And so having respect for God's things is very important, too. I know some people that are new don't understand that, but that's why you, you get you get the book of John and Proverbs and uh, David crying out with uh, to the Lord and, and the victory things that he did as well. He wrote on needs to be, you know, for them, you know, a study. Okay, so let's end with the Shalom prayer. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Honest it brings peace to pass his understanding. None of them never broken. Complete peace of God. I leave you. God bless you. Lord, keep you in all his ways. He shine upon you with his joy. Amen. Shalom.